A long time ago, people talked about seeding clouds with silver iodide right, to or, make it rain. or dry ice to make it rain. Well, the military has long wanted to prevent the fall of rain, and that's what they do. If you put a, a par fine particles of material in the air where, where clouds form, the little tiny droplets of water are either absorbed or blocked from coalescing, getting big enough to huh. fall as rain. So it inhibits the fall of rain. Or does it change also the complexity of the cloud where it doesn't even form? Well, it's, uh, it, it, it changes a lot of things. And, and ultimately, it, well, it, it also, there are other things that it does. Uh, you might think, or, or people might uh, try to deceive you into thinking, well, it reflects some sunlight away. I mean, this is what the geoscientists are, are trying to promote future geoengineering, where they put particles in the air to serve as, as a, a sunshade for the Earth. Well, this is nonsense, because what happens when you put particles in the air is that, yes, some solar radiation will be reflected but some will be absorbed. And the, the uh, bombardment of the particles with air molecules will take some of that heat away. Some of it will be re-radiated. So it'll heat the atmosphere. Moreover, it keeps heat from leaving the Earth. You probably remember back uh, many years ago in California, if you were invited to a barbecue at night, uh, then you arrived in, you know, five o'clock in the afternoon, you'd have a jacket with you. Yeah. Because yeah. It, when the sun went down... Yeah, it, it's chilly. Desert chilly. Yes, well, it doesn't do that anymore. Not as bad, you're right. Because these particles, they trap heat from leaving the Earth. Okay, so assuming they're doing all this, and they're, they're spraying this ash uh, to minimize rain... Why do it to us? Okay, well, one thing, uh, one thing it does is it, it heats the atmosphere and it keeps the Earth's heat from leaving. In other words, it causes global warming. And the, the UN hmm. and the uh, scientific community, the so-called... So global warm warming may very well be man-made. It is. So this is the biggest science-based scam ever perpetrated and it's the the un is behind it a hundred percent their 1500 scientists are claiming from their phony baloney models that do not take into account the spraying so marvin are you saying that they are increasing the temperature of the planet creating this climate change and now of course i'm going to ask you if it's all about money Oh, it's about a lot of things. Uh, for example, and, and let, me, let me say they're causing not only the heating, but climate chaos. Okay, and you, we'll talk about that in a minute with respect to California. But uh, uh, so who is to, to benefit from this? Well, the United Nations would like to, everybody wants to blame it on fossil fuel use, CO2. Yep. Uh, which is the big lie. They're causing global warming and with the spraying and blaming it on CO2. And the United Nations, of course, wants, uh, wants to claim reparations for uh, other countries from, uh, to extract taxes. They want to control sovereign nations' ability to utilize fuel. And they also want to enrich themselves and their interconnected friends uh and then another, no, no wonder this got you into hot water oh well this isn't this isn't we're not we're not done yet george uh there are those who want a single world government and they would benefit now if you want this a single and and i'm sure there are a lot of uh, maybe hundreds of multinational corporations and maybe a dozen multinational banks that could benefit from a one world government they wouldn't have to deal with you know the nonsense from the u.s and great britain and places like that 
but they can only deceive, can succeed in having a one world government if they destroy nations like the United Nations, like the United States. And this is one way to do it. They create havoc. They destroy atmosphere, uh, agriculture rather. They, they destroy citizens' health. They contaminate the environment with mercury and other toxins. They poison plants and trees. They disrupt the ozone layer. I mean, this, this, this material is terrible. And when, when you breathe these particles that you can't even see, they're so small, they go deep into your lungs and settle in your lungs. And they have all sorts of toxic materials in them. I mean, they have, uh, they have uh, chromium, they have arsenic. Oh, my God. Stay with us, Stan. Uh, we're going to come back. Uh, Jay Marvin Herndon is with us. And uh, we want you to stand up for your rights, folks, and make the call next on Coast to Coast AM. Feeling lost? Not close to your radio? Grab your smartphone or computer and listen to iHeartRadio. Pick up the free iHeartRadio apps in the App Store or go to iHeartRadio.com. Final segment with Dr. J. Marvin Herndon, and let's go back to Tom in St. Louis and let him finish up his thoughts. Go ahead, Tom. Uh, yeah, George, the thing I just wanted to point out real quick here, I, I don't want to take too much time. I know there's not much left. I was really surprised to see that on television, and the meteorologist... Um, he was actually trying to point this out without screaming it uh, of how obvious it was as to almost to be afraid of losing his job that he was pointing this out. He's got to be my buddy Dave Murray. He's a great meteorologist, isn't he? Uh, actually, I don't... Uh, mm, I think it was Greg Zimmerman. All right, his backup guy. Yeah. Okay. And it was on KTVI. It was the 5 p.m. news, and... It, I've seen a lot of contrails, and it, this was just a crazy amount. And like I said, he, he was pointing out it looked like the Star of David. But I just want to say this real quick also. It's been so dry here in the Ozarks and in the Midwest in particular, from Colorado all the way to Illinois and, and further east. Um, I've noticed if it's a really blue sky one day, mm -hmm. They'll spray, and the next day the sky will be yellow. It's like they're trying to block the sunlight, and if it wasn't for the chemtrails, there wouldn't be a cloud in the sky all winter <laughs> long, it seems like, anymore. Well, let's get your take on this, Marv. What do you think? And thanks, Tom. The, the spraying uh, overall is to control the weather and to prevent the fall of rain. And I know that in, in San Diego, when there's an announcement that we're going to be expecting rain in a couple or three days. The the spraying doubles or triples. The the sky is just full of the the trails. It's it's a deliberate effort to stop the rain from falling, uh, which obviously it creates havoc. I mean, it's it's we have a drought that's going on for four years, and now we have uh, the the stage set for forest fires, which are, I mean, not just forest fires, but just California fires that are that are raging out of control. It seems that more and more people, Marv, are having respiratory problems. What do you think? Oh, I have no doubt about this. I mean, and, and what I suspect, and my, my physician friend would, would also, I think, agree with, that uh, if this continues for, in 20 years or so, there'll be a pandemic of lung cancer. Uh, because the, that's what these particles do. They get into the lungs. They, they cause all sorts of problems. And from the lungs, they get into the, the body, into the bloodstream, and they can end up in the brain where they can uh, cause uh, neurological disorders. Yeah. Just, this is, this is uh, solid science. I mean, no, we're not speculating on this. Let's go to Joe in the Bronx. Hey, Joe, go ahead. Hey, George, how are you? Good, Joe interesting program. Uh, uh, Dr. Herndon, you're doing God's work here. Um, I'd like to ask a quick question on uh, the uh, spraying, the area of spraying. Does it carry with it an odor or is there any detectable scent when you've taken your samples? Um, no, for most people, no. But I know one person who uh, who operates the, the uh, website globalskywatch.com who is so sensitive, he can smell it. 
He can smell differences when they use different compositions. He has to sleep at night with a, a mask and a damp rag across his, uh, his uh, nose to, to try to, to get some kind of sleep. He suffers from it. And I'm sure there are many people who have uh, respiratory problems who, who suffer. There's probably all kinds of illnesses that aren't being, uh, you know, reported that uh, can be uh, that are the consequence of, of the spraying because the material that, that they're spraying, we have good reason uh, to, to, to see is, is the coal fly ash. And this stuff was, was formed in, in a in the vapors above burning coal and it's it's formed in a totally alien environment from anything natural in the world is it sprayed as a dust or as a liquid um, you know, mixed into with water or something to my knowledge it's probably sprayed as a dust but i i i, I don't have that specific information probably it's sprayed as a dust the little uh, the particles are in many instances sears so though they could um, they could be sprayed, uh, but there may be additives added to help it to disperse. That's all the secret information that uh, uh, we don't have access to. Let's go to our international line. Mike's with us from Sarnia, Ontario, in Canada. Hi, Mike. How are you today, boys? Good. All is well. Now you said you couldn't find any pilots who were willing to come forward. I'm just wondering if they might be unwitting with participants in this and they don't even know that there's a system on uh, the plane they, that's they actually could, doing that. They've got to be pushing the buttons and see it spray, I would think. What do you think of that? Hey, I, the, can, I uh, can make a phone call and I can lock the doors at my house. All right, well, that's true, but you would see it, wouldn't you? You'd see the spray behind it. Marv, what do you think? I think the pilots know what's going on. Well, I, they, certainly the, 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 the organization or organizations that are doing the main part of the spraying, they, they must know what's going on, but they're probably under uh, extreme duress. If they, if they say anything, they, they could, um, well, they're probably threatened with, with prison in Leavenworth or worse. Um, so uh, there's also the possibility, people have suggested this, I don't have any factual information, that maybe even commercial airliners are being fitted with spraying equipment, and even the flight crews don't even know about it, because it could be operated automatically. I do not know, but I, I know that uh, people need to come forward with all of the information uh, that they can. Uh, you wonder, how is this going to end? Well, certainly one way is when there are lawsuits. Now, there's currently a lawsuit that pertains to um, uh, the, the desiccation of California and the failure of the uh, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration to release uh, information under Freedom of Information Act. Uh, but what I think will really stop it is when lawyers realize that this could end up with massive class action lawsuits against those people who aid and abet this this human tra tragedy uh, i'm not a real fan of lawyers I'll, i do know some lawyers i have great respect for but i but i do think that that class action attorneys serve a real purpose of keeping people honest because, for example, if book publishers who publish uh, journals on uh, medical and uh, public health articles and they unwarrantedly reject publication of articles war warning of the health effects of the spraying, then if there's a, uh, a, a class action lawsuit against them, they would change the way they operate. Well, they might even become even more secretive than they are.